You are joining Making a Difference with Melissa Clark, a show that shares the compelling stories and voices of well-known and everyday people who change the world in big and small ways. Enjoy our guests. Call in or just listen to be inspired. For this show was made with you in mind. Please join us every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with our special guests. And you can listen to our recast at www.melissaclarkshow.com. Hi, thank you for joining us on Making a Difference. I'm Melissa Billy Clark. We are absolutely thrilled to have Gail Miller Beischer on our program today. Gail is an award-winning advertising broadcast producer. Her love for animals started at a young age and she made her career out of being the voice for animals. Gail is also a spokesperson for the American Kennel Club and she is the analyst for the famous Westminster Club Dog Show that happens each year. Gail, I'm over the moon from one animal lover to another. Thank you so much for being on this program. I know that you are an important and very busy woman, so thank you. Happy to be here, Melissa. Always happy to talk about dogs. Absolutely. We have the Westminster show coming up. So, of course, we had to postpone it this year because of COVID. We're just really grateful that we even get to have the dog show. Mm -hmm. But normally our show is in February in Manhattan. This year, it's been postponed to June. So it's June 11th through 13th. And it's actually in, in Lindhurst State, which is a grand estate in Terrytown, New York, which is about half an hour north of Manhattan. The interesting thing is it's the first time in 145 years that Westminster has happened outside of Manhattan. We've always been a city event. Interesting. Now we're going to the country, so it must be beautiful over there. I love Terrytown. Now, please tell our listeners who do not follow the Westminster shows uh, the importance of a show and the positive awareness the show brings um, to dogs in general. Sure. So, you know, Westminster's been around since 1877. And since our beginning, we have been what's called a benched show, which means that the dogs have to stay on site all day and they are categorized, they're generally benched all together. So you have all the Afghans together, all the dachshunds together. And the reason for that is general, is public education. Mm -hmm. That is a big part of Westminster. It has been since the 1800s. It's that we want the public to be able to come in, see all the dogs, meet the dogs, talk to the owners, talk to the breeders, learn about the dogs, see dog breeds that they don't often get to see and learn more about the common ones that you may not know everything about. And so public education on the show site has always been a, a big part of our mission. And of course, to make that even more exciting, in 1948, we started being the first televised uh, dog show. And so since that time, we've obviously grown. We're now st- uh, one of a couple of televised dog shows, but still the only live televised dog show where you get to see every single breed. And there's a lot of education telecast as well. Again, it go- Melissa, it goes back to finding the right breed for your lifestyle. We wanna make sure people know what they're getting into when they bring a dog into their home as we all all know that's so critical. And so being a public education event and telecast is a big part of the Westminster mission. Yeah, we thank you so much for that. You know, can you tell us what uh, the day entails at a Westminster show, please? Sure. So the beginning of the competition is what's called the breed judging. And so exhibitors come from all 50 states. This year we have all 50 represented and uh, they travel to you know, to come to Manhattan usually, but this year Lyndhurst Castle in, in Terrytown, and they will be judged by breed. So you'll have like all the Borzois competing against each other. And then the winner, the best of breed of each breed, and there are 209 eligible breeds this year, uh, the, the winners of uh, each breed then go on to the group competition. And so the group competition is what you see on TV at night. So that's the hound group, working group, sporting group. And then the winners of those competitions, there's only seven groups, so the seven winners then go on to best in show. And so it's really a process of elimination, but starting with each breed. And it's important to note that in the dog world, just 
winning best of breed at Westminster is a huge honor, let alone going to the next levels and, uh, and getting a good look from the judge. <laughs> wow, that's, that's so amazing. I could only imagine how it is. Do you think it's like chaotic, like at a uh, fashion show or something? Everybody's going nuts, making sure everything's perfect? Because those shows are really uh, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't think it's as crazy as the backstage of a fashion show now that I've been to a few. Yeah. Um, it's not quite that hectic last minute because you've already prepared way before you've gotten to the show. Your dog's already trained and groomed and prepared. So by the time you get to the actual dog show, you know, 90% of the work's done. Now you really just have to make sure the dog's rested and groomed for that one competition, for that, for that one special moment. Love it. And you come from a family of breeders. Um, how does it make you feel to the, be the voice of Westminster and the face? Well, um, as you noted, I did work at the American Kennel Club as a spokesperson for several years, and my parents were alive when that happened, but they were not alive when I started at Westminster and they both passed. And so it's very, you know, sad to me that they didn't get to watch that um that progression but i'm sure they're you know looking down and very proud but um it, it you know they were huge supporters growing up i was a junior handler so i was a you know teenager competing in dog shows and they would drive me all over the country competing and they bred and showed as well but they certainly were very supportive of me and helped me learn um all about dogs and dog care and and uh, competitions and then uh, unfortunately they didn't get to see the cherry on top yeah it's a, it's hard to to lose your supporters your, yes. your cheerleaders yes absolute <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that with us gail so what is your relationship with dogs and what do they mean for uh, to you so of course i grew up you know in a house full of dogs and um there have only been a few um, months in my life when I've not had a dog in the house, a dog that lived with me. And that was just when I was between my last show dog, Pat, when he Pat, my, you know, big winning show dog, he passed away and um, I was about to move. And so I moved cities. And so I thought, I'll just wait until I get settled again before I start, you know, bringing another dog in. Um, so there was a short period in my life with no dog in the house and it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible because you walk in and it's just silent. And I just can't even, I, I, you know, it wasn't good because A, it was silent and B, there just wasn't someone happy to see you, you know, you're just so used to seeing those wagging tails and that, you know, that joy that they bring. And so uh, I'm so used to having that. And I, and I guess I'm also used to the responsibility angle of it. I really enjoy make their lives as um, interesting and fun as it can be. And that's something the dog sports give us a chance to do. So having a pet is great, but if you can, work with them and train them, spend time grooming them, spend time training and then travel and maybe compete uh, in some competition. So your bond is even closer. There's just a great feeling there. And it really makes me feel on their last days when they're with us at the very end that I gave them all they could have. I gave them an interesting life. I gave them something to think about, interesting places. They traveled, they did things. And so uh, I take that responsibility very seriously that it's my job to make their lives as good as they can be. And so um, I guess that's how I see it. I see it as if you can't really give it your all, just don't bring one home. <laughs> I totally agree with you. Now, what does a guardian of a dog go through when they have a show dog? Uh, what do they have to do to keep the dog protected? Well, it all starts with the preservation breeders. So a responsible preservation breeder, which are the people that are involved in our dog sports, um, they're very involved in uh, health screenings. So breedings don't happen until the dogs have had health screenings, genetic testing, DNA testing, things like that. Um, hips, elbows, x-rays, all that kind of stuff happens before dogs are bred. And so making sure that you produce the next sound and healthy generations, that's the that's the starting point. But then, of course, um, making sure that when a dog is placed in its new home as a puppy, maybe a new puppy owner, most preservation breeders have um, folders or kits that they give them that gives them step by step, you know, things that to do and not do. Uh, making sure that the dogs, if they're not going to be shown, are spayed or neutered. Mm -hmm. um, that's usually in the contract. The other thing that's always in the contract um, for preservation breeders is that 
if for some reason you can't keep the dog, whether it doesn't work out or you're getting divorced or whatever life issues are going on and you can't keep the dog, it is in the contract, the dog comes back to the breeder. It does not go to a shelter. It doesn't just get handed off to a neighbor. Good. The dog is legally supposed to come back to the breeder so that they can make sure it's properly rehomed. Nice. And you've been a dog trainer for a long time. Did you ever come across a dog that was mishandled? And if so, how did you handle that? We have. We ha it's rare because generally the, the people, you know, you screen people and try and make sure that the puppy buyers are a good family. But, you know, sometimes things happen and things change. Um, we have brought dogs home. My mother, I remember, had a dog returned that was so skinny, so thin, had not been, and, and they claimed they did try and feed it, and but the dog was so thin, it was incredible. And it could have mm -hmm. been that the dog didn't want to eat because he wasn't comfortable, who knows. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, taking it back under your wing, making sure it gets all the veterinary care and socialization again and proper, you know, proper reentry really into, uh, into normal community life before rehoming it. But, you know, it's important to find if you have to rehome a dog to make sure that you know the issues or potential issues. You know, I've heard of other stories where a dog didn't get along with the other dogs in the household. So it went back to the breeder yes. and then they found a home where it was the only dog. So then it was fine. They had a great long life and family life was perfect and a good community member. But you know, sometimes the situations aren't right. That's, that's life that's gonna happen. But really having somebody that has the patience and knowledge um, to, to make sure the dog is, is cared for and it's next family. Absolute. Thank you. And please tell us some of the charities that you work with with animals. So Westminster is, um, you know, we're a not-for-profit organization, but we have a long history of making sure that we give back to the community. And so veterinary student scholarships are a big part of um, our support for the canine health field. And uh, additionally, there are you know, many organizations that we've given to over the years. It's interesting when you look at the history of Westminster, there were years during the war in the 40s where donations were given to Dogs in Defense, Dogs for Defense, excuse me, that organization during the World Wars. Um, and in fact, our first show in 1877 in Manhattan, uh, the fourth day that was added because it was such a popular dog show after three days, they added a fourth day and the proceeds from that fourth day went to establishing the ASPCA in New York City. And so um, there's a long history of charitable giving from the organization. And so that's something that I'm always trying to expand upon, of course, as the director of communications for Westminster. I want to keep trying to making those connections and um, supporting canine health and, of course, supporting other organizations that help dogs. Thank you. And you have a little girl. What would you like for her to learn from you about dogs and animals? Well, she too has grown up with dogs in the house. <laughs> she, <laughs> she wouldn't know a house without dogs. Um, and so uh, she's already a dog lover and she can, she feeds them. She already takes care, you know, does things to help me take care of them, of course. Um, you know, she's nine, so she's getting some other interests, sports and friends and that type of thing. But, um, uh, but she's already a dog lover and animal lover. We have a local, um, what is it? It's, um, it's called the Darien Nature Center. And so they have, um, they rehome injured like owls, lizards, things that can't be back out into the wild, right? And so they keep them there as educational mm. uh, programs for kids. And she has been volunteering and working there for, this is probably her third year now. Wow. And so she can tell you, she can make a salad for a turtle. She can clean the cage of the ferrets. Like she definitely is an animal caretaker. And, and, and she's really only nine. It. She's only and nine. She's nine. And you know, I, I hope she brings those skills home. Help me with the dogs. That's right. <laughs> and Gail, what is your wish for animals uh, for their safety? Well, I wish that, you know, for all animals that they can find a loving home. That's, you know, and, and that really starts with education. As you know, Melissa, it really starts with education, educating people before they bring an animal into their home. So I really just hope that what Westminster is doing as far as trying to explain the breeds and the history of the breeds, because obviously temperaments and um, 
behaviors are things that have come down, you know, for centuries through these yeah. purebred dog lines. And so really just finding out information before they bring a dog into their home. So my, my role, I guess, my little piece of it is to keep talking about that and promoting that and trying to explain the different breeds and the needs of dog ownership. I mean, exercise, grooming, vet bills, there's a lot to it. And I think sometimes people um, look at it um, as more of as a impulse purchase, you know, that it's a cute puppy. And really, it's a 15 year commitment. And, you know, some people spend more time shopping for cars than they do dogs. And I, I just wish people would take time and, and really learn about the breeds. I wish so too. And, and I want to thank you so much for educating people out there and devoting your life uh, to this uh, industry and animals. And we thank you so much for your time, Gail. Thank you for thank making you. a difference. Oh, thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you, Gail. The Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show will air on Fox Saturday, June 12th and Sunday, June 13th. Please check your local listings. Making a Difference is sponsored by Preferred Health Magazine. Please visit www.preferredhealthmagazine.com today and subscribe. <music>